Hey, hey, hey. Look at this, two for the price of one. <laughs> so normally, normally it's just me doing the Instagram lives, but Instagram went a bit dicky do this morning or lunchtime. So it didn't allow us to save the video to IGTV and it didn't allow me therefore to upload it to that there YouTube, which some of you might be on. So we're gonna re-record now some tips on our tips on some mistakes that we've made here at Morgis HQ. We've been doing building and renovation for a long time, over 20 years. But you know what? Products and materials change. And we've made some mistakes here with water-based paints on the outside. So we're gonna talk you through those so you don't make the same mistakes. That's good of us, isn't it? Um, it's good to have Mr. Morgis here. He had an operation on his leg eight weeks ago. It's the first time he's had his work pants on. So you know what? It's good to get some work out of you, Mr. Morgis. Well, we'll see. Moral support. Um, right, let's get cracking. So. One of the reasons we wanted to talk to you about um, external paints is that they're an absolute minefield and lots of people ask me what the best paint is to use. I'm not talking for decorative projects, you know, like a little table or, or a, a fancy chair that you might want to paint sky blue pink with yellow dots, you know, for this summer. Talking about the actual fences, windows, you know, big bay windows, those sort of painting projects where really you want to paint it and then you want to forget about it. You do not want that stuff to be peeling off so you have to do it again. Um, especially as well if you've paid somebody to do it um, and it hasn't been done properly uh, or it hasn't been done with the right product. And one of the reasons why it's problematic now is because um, it used to be that everything outside was painted with an oil-based paint, but things have moved on. You know, the world has moved on and we now we, we talk about sustainability and eco projects and, and zero VOCs or, or low VOC emission from paint. So we've moved on to water-based paints um, and they are problematic outside. I'm just going to show you two areas on our house where which we started the renovation five years ago. It was five years ago, isn't it? Yeah. About five years ago. Yep. Long time. We've been renovating for ages. We've been wearing these scruffy clothes for years now. Um, I'm going to show you two areas where painting externally has been problematic and I'm going to show you how to avoid that and do it properly. So we shall take the phone off the arm and we shall go on a little wander. So you can see the house in the background. This is the garage area and you can see there. Can you see? So we've used a redwood board at the front of the garage on the apex and you can see that it's got measles. And the reason it's got measles is that the paint when we put the redwood up we painted it with a really good quality primer and undercoat onto the bare wood and then a really good quality top coat and what happened all the knots have popped so underneath there are all the knots in the pine and the paint has literally popped and peeled off all the knots and there's a reason for that I'm going to talk you through but there's another area where it's been problematic which is, can you see the dormers that we've put on top of the extension? So we've got at the top, the bifolds are obviously aluminium. Um, you can see the washing there, excuse my washing, just there. <laughs> um, and the window frames are pine, so softwood pine. Because they're quite small, we could use softwood, not hardwood. But to be a little bit careful, um, because obviously the sill is the bit that gets the most weathering, because it's where the water falls, we put a hardwood sill. We use this exactly the same water-based primer and undercoat, good quality and top coat on both the softwood frame and the sill. And guess where the paint popped off? On the hardwood. So at first we, were, I, we just did not understand why the paint would have popped off on the hardwood sill and not on the softwood frame. Let me pop this back onto the... Um, let me pop this back onto here. So yeah, we just did not really understand why that was happening. So we um, we got a bit, we were, we were a bit annoyed, weren't we? Yeah, and because of the, basically, a bit like I said, because of the price of the actual stuff we were using. Mm -hmm. And on the tin, it actually said that it was a six year guarantee. I know. And we got 18 months. Six, six years, yeah, it was. And, and yeah, so not only was it cost of the paint, but also, our time. I'd spent a long time painting those things and um, I was, yeah, pissed off would be putting it mildly. So what we did was speak to, not a decorator actually, but speak to the window manufacturer. So we used a local timber manufacturer who made our softwood sills there, a softwood windows with hardwood sills. And um, 
he was actually just in the process of, we were just in the process of ordering the new bays. So you might have just seen the bays. In fact, if we just, oh, just turn that round. Can you see the bays there at the front? Can you see the bay, oh, finger, the bays out at the front. And those are hardwood, okay? Because on a, on a window that big, going up, the, the big one, um, on the window that big, you wouldn't ever have um, softwood pine because it might warp. It's quite, um, oh, can we get that there? Back on. The thing is with um, today's pine is it's really slow, uh, it's really fast grown. So pine in the Edwardian Victorian times, whether it's from Canada or from Russia, a lot of it was in Can Russia at first and then Canada, um, it was very slow grown and very stable. And the thing is with the pine now, it's really fast grown, it's not stable, it's quite green, it's quite young. Um, so what we did was spoke to Tommy at Jackson's Joinery and he said, well, I'm presuming, Cyan, that you used alley paint. What, sorry, what? Alley paint. And I didn't know what alley paint was. Mr. Morgis, did you know what alley paint was? Not a clue. No. At were you all. listening then or were you just looking? <laughs> He's just staring then. He was in a world of his own. I was listening to you. So was... neither of us, neither of us knew what bloody alley paint was. <laughs> and we'd been using bog standard, costly, but bog standard water-based paint. Well, trade. It, we were using the trade stuff, wasn't it? But still, uh, you know, used, yeah. everybody, everybody use. So this is aluminium wood primer, or as Tommy called it, alley paint. And this stuff literally has got aluminium in it. So can you see? It's silver. It's got a bit of a skin on it. I haven't used this for, I don't know, three or four months, maybe a little bit longer. I mean, we're March now, so I probably haven't used it since last September. But it's got a skin on it. It does, you know, it, it's quite hard, but you just cut that off. Um, but it's, it's literally silver because of the aluminium content. And what happens is because of the metal content in it, it absolutely sticks to anything. And the reason why the big bay still looks so fantastic is that because I painted all of that with aluminium paint when that arrived, unlike the hardwood sills, the reason why aluminium paint will stick to hardwood and softwood, or the, re sorry, I'll just rephrase that. The reason why hardwood rejects uh, water-based primer, did I say this earlier? Yeah. Was because it's got the high oil content. Yeah. So. Um, the Alley Primer will allow you to paint the bare wood, even hardwood or uh, softwood or, or hardwood, with um, the because of the high aluminium content. So it sticks to it, it sticks like heck. A bit like, um, bit like shellac paint. So you know if you've used Zinza Bin or shellac paint on internal timber, if you've used it on kitchen doors or something, it sticks to anything. Well, so does this stuff. And then after you've used the aluminium paint, you can use um, a water-based top coat. Uh, water-based undercoat and then top coat so if you look at it i've done you a piece actually here so it's just literally um painted and it look it almost looks dark gray did i nearly hit you on the head then mr morgis yes <laughs> um so i mean i could put let's have a little look i'll show you i'll show you actually whoops i'll just dip dip my brush in a little bit of the silver paint and you'll see it going on Can you see? And actually this brush has got a little bit of white spirit in it because it was in white spirit, so it went on quite easily. You can sort of, um, you can put a little bit of white spirit in alley paint if it's gone a bit thick, because it does have a tendency to go a bit thick after time. Um, so that basically, you need that to dry overnight. It's not like a water-based paint where it's dry in an hour, but honestly, it is the dog's bananas. You know what I mean by that. Um, so if you are doing, that is probably the best tip that we can give you. Um, I've got to do the sills. We've got to do the sills, haven't we? We haven't been able to do that because of yeah. Mr. M's leg the last eight weeks. We've got to do the sills in the aluminium paint. And also what we'll do now we've, um, on where the knots have blown, where the, the water-based paint has blown off the knots on the garage, we'll, we've sanded that back, hence you can see the holes, the, the circles. And I'll use basically aluminium paint, let that dry, and then I'll use the same water-based undercoat and top coat. This is one of the, I mean, I, I really like this. This is jo It's a Johnson's paint. We're not kind of paint brand affiliated. And I use Dulux as well, and I use other brands, and I've used B&Q. Um, but the Johnson's one actually in the UK is pretty good. And I also have it, um, another tip is, if you're gonna do dark, because a lot of people are doing dark greys, aren't they, outside now, um, have your undercoat, if you, don't, um, if you just get, go to a trade place, have it dyed dark grey. 
because it makes it easier when you put a dark grey top coat on. You won't want to use a white undercoat on top of grey aluminium and then put grey on the top of the white. So make sure you, you, you get that. Is that all that? Is that covered all the tips, do you reckon, on them? Yeah, there's, there's, there's on undercoating, yeah. yeah. There's one more good tip that, uh, that we've used, um, and that is because we use an expensive, a lot of people are using because they'd like a nice outside and, and, and this yeah. particular colour was quite popular, wasn't it? Well, it's popular. It's we've still used popular. we've used the Bifols are uh, Rel Seven O One Six, yeah. which is uh, yeah, Rel, uh, is really popular, and it works with us because it goes with the slate roof. You can just see there, which is why we picked it. Um, but we've also so we picked a paint colour, so we used Fire Ball railings because it matched the Seven O One Six. So that's why we ended up going for an expensive paint, which is why it's a bit hacked off, a bit bubbled off the hardwood. But because we Cy wanted. Oh, we both wanted the expensive paint and there are there is a lot the bays are big they're quite big mm. um to save a little bit of money it, well when you go to get your um paint good, good tip this go to go to your um your paint store ask them to do you a mix of mm. uh it's a copy of, of the, the color that you want it's a bit naughty it's a bit naughty and expensive. Well, everybody does it now be, even being q do it all paint stores do it now so it's not as though you're doing anything you know and they've all got the dulux stuff and um, well, so it's so well, it's Dulux or um, it. It doesn't matter. Johnson's do it. So if yeah. the paint, if the paint um, mixing store have their own mixing tables, the mixing machines, they can actually mix to whatever color you want. So you can get a um, you know really expensive paint brand, get their get the code for their color, and have it mixed. You will never get, so I really, I've done a video on this actually, it's not on here, but I've done a video on this. You will never get exactly the same. So if you have fallen in love with an expensive brand of a paint color, um, or a, a color of an expensive brand, you will never get that copied the same. So you know what, if you fall in love with it, save up and get the real thing. But if you can't quite afford it, if you're doing a lot of areas, like we've done a lot of fencing here, we've got a lot of bay windows. If you use the um, an undercoat, a really good quality undercoat mixed to the same color and then the expensive one on the top. You know, it's a way of saving some pennies, but I would say that um, you get what you pay for. You do get what you pay for in terms of the top coat color. And we've done it here where we've compared the expensive brand to the copy. We've literally done it on fence panels next to each other and there was no comparison, no, was there? No, no. So yeah, so that's a good tip. Um, we've also, have we not, we haven't touched on no, the, not the not blocking. So if you're, going, if you're only going to do a very small window, so if say for example, you've just got one pine window to do and um, and it's not hardwood and you th it's not, doesn't particularly get lots of weathering, the knots aren't going to blow. So if you, if you think about our garage where all the, only the knots have blown and actually the redwood, the pine, the water-based primer has stuck really well to the pine because it's a softwood. So if you've got softwood windows, but they've got lots of knots, you must use a knot block, okay? You must use, not necessarily this one, but you must use one. And the reason being, when you put it on, can you see where the, um, we've got the piece of pine here, and I've just put a little bit of the knot block. Can you see where it's got a little bit of an orangey color? And what it, um, what it is, the knot block is a resinous substance which stops the sap. Whoop, what are we doing? Oh, you can see it on the back, can you? Um, oh yeah, oh, should, I do you? should I show you how you do it? Um, hang on a minute. So basically, the um, the knot blocking solution stops the sap that from bleeding through into your paint. Because what you don't want, what you do not want, is you do not want on a really pale colour, or actually even on a grey, you do not want your paint work to look like it's got measles when the sap starts to bleed through water-based paint. So this seals it in. I've just put some of the, um, I've just put some of the knot block in there earlier and that basically is it. That's all you do. Just touch it up like that. Let that dry and then paint over it. And it stops the sap coming through. So that's a really good tip for inside or out, to be honest. If you're doing skirting boards inside or architraves, um, you've got to do that. You have got to do it. Otherwise, your woodwork will look bloody awful. Look like it's got measles. Um, what other little tips have we got, Mr. Moore? Just what other little tips have we got? We've got this. So if you are sanding, if you are, when we've sanded the window sills and when I've sanded the redwood at the top of the garage, um, you can use, oh, here we go. 
You can use an orbital sander. So if you are renovating, you know what? And if you've got a lot of sanding to do, that was um, that was invaluable. You've used yeah. that so much, haven't you? 50 quid, that was it. Yeah, 50 quid, 50 quid from BQ again. or wherever online. And it has been absolutely brilliant. But if you've only got a small area to do and the orbital sander, I, you know, it's a bit unwieldy or if you haven't got one, um, then just use, make sure you use um, a sanding block. I mean, I've got a piece of the orbital sander, but you can get regular sandpaper in a sheet, can't you? Put it over, because what it does is it keeps the sandpaper flat. I'm gonna have awful hands, aren't I? Although we're all washing our hands at the minute, non-stuff, aren't we? We've been COVID-19, so we've always got, we've all got rubbish hands anyway. So basically, rub it like that, and it keeps it flat, so you don't get indentations in your timber. Um, Miss Moore, just got a, a top good, tip, actually, haven't you? A good this? tip, if you, use, if you are using orbital sander, okay? <laughs> <laughs> The pads generally, you can go to any DIY, every, any good DIY store, B&Q, anything like that. They'll come in fives and sixes, and they're about five or six quid. That one's six, isn't it? Six in a pack. This is six. Um, they're about five or six quid. If you're doing quite a lot, which we've done here, because we've done a lot of the seat, you know, we've made seating from scaffolding boards, and we've done, we've used all the, the uh, old wood that we took out of the house to use for various things. So uh, we've done a lot. I, I forced you to do a lot. Is what you're actually in a, saying. In a word. Um, if you go on either online or you've got something, uh, a, a, a car showroom, uh, sorry, not a car showroom, a car shop or anything like that that does. Um, it's the respray the sprays, shops, isn't it? Yeah. So, this, yeah. so, sprays or pads, because they do a lot of this, you can get packs of 50 or 100 of these mm. for about 12 or 13 pounds. So, it's so much it's more cost effective totally to buy them. cost effective, yeah. The one in Manchester um, is called Colour Tone. Yeah. But if you Google your local area for. Um, the place that sells car spray, car spray shops, then yeah. that's where you buy them from, isn't it? And it's a really, it's a really good tip that because it's expensive stuff. It's expensive renovating, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you want to. One of the reasons we've done this video is you, you want to avoid mistakes and buy the, at the best prices you can. Um, and it's been really, really frustrating for us to have not used the alley paint and not done some knot locking because. Because nobody tells you this stuff, you, do they? Because you, you know? don't get to do it again. Yeah. So I think sometimes it's good to show people the mistakes that, that have been made and how to avoid them and how to rectify them. So we're going to rectify these, but how to avoid them in the first place. Another good tip with this is <laughs> the, the number, the lower the number of, the, of your grade, yeah. um, is the harder it is, the, the rougher it is. Rougher. The rougher it is. So, so I always have 50s. 80s and 120s but also to finish off on a nice fine smooth you can go up to a 180 or a 240, 240 so yeah. don't forget if you want to take the top surface off it's your lower yeah numbers. 80s or 100, yeah. 120s and then to smooth it all off like glass paper it's sort of the 240s so so there you go those are our top tips those are our top tips for um avoiding wood that looks like it's got measles outside avoiding um the paint water-based paint to blow because it's all water-based in it to blow um off external window sills and window frames if you're doing furniture really or outside tables you want it to last don't you, you want to do it once mm. you don't want to do it once and want to do it properly that's a good tip actually because the alley paint is the alley primer sorry is really hard wearing as well yeah so if it's on a if it's on a table or it's on a chair and you're banging or kids are kicking or banging mm. it doesn't chip like some of the nicer paints will chip look some of the nicer brighter colors will chip we did it. and actually um the bay at the front of the house um we haven't just haven't got round to painting it properly yet and there are some areas around there which have still got the aluminium paint on from two years ago i shouldn't really tell you that should i <laughs> But you know what it's life, life gets in the way and it's still protected and and it's rained. It's Manchester, it's Manchester folks. Um, so it is good stuff, it is really good stuff. Anyway, there you go, those are our top tips. So we hope you've enjoyed them. It's time to go in and make our tea now with, with what, what have we got in the uh, coronavirus period? God knows what's in the fridge. We hope you guys are all, all um, muddling through and finding time for some DIY and finding time to move your renovations on because that's the one thing we've all got at the minute, isn't it? Time. Time to watch videos like this and time to then put that advice into action. Right, Mr. Morgis, it's good night from me. And it's good night from him. <laughs> <laughs>